So I was rewatching Fifty Shades of Grey the other day. I got a sick idea for Warhammer Army. <laughs> We've got something a little bit different for you today. We've got our monthly kill team hang coming up in about 48 hours, and we've both decided that we want to take a brand new box and get it tabletop ready for the day. That means we're going to be for you, filming every step from unboxing all the way to having a complete tabletop ready army. But there's one more caveat. We're not going to try and do it in 48 hours. We're going to try and do it in 12 hours. Also, we're going to be featuring these two armies in our next battle report. We're going to be doing the classic C-tier matchup of Compendium Orcs versus Nurgle Plague Bearers. We've had no choice but to dub it Fifty Shades of Green. As an extra little incentive, if one of us successfully completes our army in the 12-hour mark and the other person does not, the person who has completed their army will get to pick whether they're the attacker or defender in our upcoming battle report featuring these armies. I'll be playing the 2018 Orc Boy Sculpts because I get an entire kill team in a box. I can't imagine what kind of person would buy two boxes just to get a couple extra miniatures to make their kill team complete. Well, I hate to tell you, Rick, I'm that kind of person. You need 12 Plague Bearers to field a kill team. The box comes with 10. So I'll be fielding a second box. And you might say, well, great, Brad. You only need to paint 12 to Victor's 11. Only one more. Well, no. I'm not going to paint just 12. I'm going to paint all 20. Am I stupid for this? Yes, probably, but... <laughs> all right, so we have our orders. We're ready to go. We know what the plan is for this challenge, and uh, I guess let's get painting. See you in a couple days. Yep. All right, here I am, getting started, opening the boxes. Super hyped. I'm getting going here around mid-morning. I didn't start super early because, you know, it's only 12 hours. It's not super long. Yep, obviously, step number one, unboxing. Uh, got a fresh coffee and, uh, you know, ready to dig in. So my first real step here is uh, prepping the bases. I was using some texture paint, which takes a bit of time to dry. So I wanted to do that first and give it time to be ready to prime uh, when I get to that stage. Uh, so this is my, <laughs> my first setback of the day. Um, I wanted to start by magnetizing my bases because I used the magnet for basing a lot of the time. I uh, used a new brand of super glue, was not sticking, so what we cut out here is a lot of me sticking my fingers together, getting tilted and throwing sand everywhere. I don't like sand. Uh, but I too thought that starting with the bases was the right way to go. Okay, so here I am getting my fingers absolutely filthy right off the bat. Uh, you know, gotta make sure the rims are clean, but I really had to give my hands a good wash after this. I didn't want to contaminate any other parts of the models. Yeah, I'm just gluing a few cork pieces on and uh, throwing some gravel on the bases. I guess this is our first real divergence in technique. Brad's demonstrating the toddler method of basing here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't knock my technique, it worked. I had to clean off the rims. A half an hour in here and I'm finally snipping models off the sprue. This kit wasn't uh, too tricky to build. Most models had about five to seven pieces to glue together. So overall, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. I am very picky with my mold lines though. And I, I know for a fact that I'm a slow builder. All right, you all know the story here. Cut, 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 scrape, scrape, scrape. Glue falls apart, glue it again, use a different glue, etc. I'm leaving everything off the bases for now. Uh, figured it would be easier to paint everything quickly later if they were all still separate. Okay, so I'm at about nine hours and 40 minutes left here, and uh, this is my first sign that I'm in a bit of trouble. I'm moving much more slowly than I would have liked. I only have four models built here, and I have four more that are about half built, so not exactly on track for where I had planned to be at this point. This was the worst 10 minutes of my life putting this stupid model together. The instructions were terrible. The pieces were terrible. There were mold lines everywhere. Um, I think I ended up kind of improvising and giving up and thinking I would just fix it all with weathering later. Just me doing some more snipping. Snip snap. Snip snap, snip snap, snip snap. I did. Okay. You have no idea the physical toll. 20 plague bearers. Have a person. At this point, I've got all the models ready for priming. I'm going to prime them and then wait about an hour for it to dry. The best part of this is that it gives me a chance to like and subscribe to all of my favorite upstart Warhammer YouTubers because it makes a huge, huge difference. 
Yeah, Vic's, uh, Vic's making great progress. Let's see how I'm doing. Ooh, not so, not so great here. Uh, I'm quite behind here. I think if I had just stuck with the 12 models needed for Kill Team, I wouldn't be too far behind where Vic is, but uh, I, I'm in over my head here. I'm way behind. So I really wanted to get these on the bases as soon as possible. So the first thing I do is a couple thin coats of brown paint on their boots so I can glue them onto the bases and start painting in a more comfortable position. All right, so just under eight hours left now. Uh, I finished building the first box, but I realized that I forgot to put any of the little nerglings on the bases. So I went back and put a couple on and then I had to reapply the texture paint just to cover up the bases that they come with. So uh, if I had thought ahead more, I could have streamlined this, but oh well. Not much to see here, just uh, gluing 11 things onto bases with questionably effective glue. Now I'm starting the process of base coating, um, starting with the green, which I'll eventually work up, but I decided to just do one kind of thin coat of all the base coats, get the wash down, and then build all the colors up gradually. I'm past the halfway point now of the 12 hours and uh, still building, still building. How many guys have I built here? Uh, looks like I'm on guy number 16, so uh, yikes. More base coating. Now I'm painting all of, I don't know, some color. Okay, so just over five hours left and I'm finally done building. Just, uh, just gluing these guys to their bases now. Overall, I'm happy with how the models look. I think I got most of the mold lines and stuff off, but really way too slow for the challenge of this, uh, this whole endeavor. But anyways, uh, now I continue to prime my models. Man, I've used up almost two thirds of my time by now, and I'm just starting to put on the first layers of paint. But uh, I guess better late than never, and here we go. As for the 50 shades of green of this project, I really wanted to try something new and kind of have every model be a slightly different shade of green. So I had uh, three or four kind of base colors on my palette and just in between each model, I just mixed around a slightly new color and I was going for kind of a horde effect where everyone's a little bit different by the end. So uh, we'll, see, we'll see how that turns out. All right, time for a quick null oil bath on everyone. Uh, you see here that I am deep in the ugly phase of this paint. Uh, everything's really muddled and terrible, and that was all kind of part of the plan. I just wanted to get paint on as quickly as possible and then have as much time left to highlight and clean things up and go over all the areas. Uh, so now I'm painting all the bone details and metal details because I only wanted them to have kind of one spot wash each instead of getting the null bath like everything else. All right, three hours left, and uh, I, I think here I've just started my second coat of my base colors on each of my models. So, uh, yeah, I think in this in this moment I knew I wasn't going to finish on time for the 12-hour mark, but I still was going to push through, and I really wanted to get everything done for game day. Under three hours, and I finally hit the wash stage. Yes. Now I'm just going around to all the different colors that I've used and building up the original tones, staying out of the recesses. You know, that old chestnut. More wash in here. To be honest though, I actually really, really did enjoy this process. Uh, I tried to do all of the base color of the model since there's so much base green on these guys. I tried to do all of that, including the base coats, washes, and dry brushing before I did any other colors, just so I could be messy and quick. And I, I gotta say, after painting some Space Marines and some other more tricky models, this was a really fun way to paint, doing so much without really trying to be precise. Dry brushing here. And as I was finally finishing dry brushing on the final base color of the final guy, uh, disaster struck. The man just falls right off his base. I mean, help me out. Nothing a little super glue can't fix, but uh, this, this deeply saddened me. So as you can tell by the big gap in my time, I got into a pretty big zone, had the headphones on, cranking a Horace Heresy audiobook and kept forgetting to hit record. Which one? Flight of the Eisenstein. Nice. Six out of ten. Don't really recommend it. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, I'm just at this point finishing up some highlights, scrambling, doing as much as I can, kind of slowly adding more yellow to the green and red to the purple to bring up those colors as much as I can. 
uh, really, really rushing now, taking a lot less time than I would like to, but name of the game. All right, here we go. With now the bass tones completely done, I move on to metal, and I just start basing in some dark bronze over most of the metal. With about five minutes left, I'm just painting the rims of the bases so those have time to dry and I can do some final last-minute touches. All right, so as my time runs out, I put a last tiny bit of wash on their feet just to build up some shadow, and I'm pretty happy with them for 12 hours. All right, so here's my completed 12-hour paint job. I'm pretty happy with how they turned out, given the restrictions. Obviously, these ones probably aren't going to win me the Golden Demon this year, but as far as getting models onto the tabletop, I'm pretty happy. I think, you know, there's still some room for improvement, but my philosophy is that models are never really finished. I always have a good time pulling some off of the shelf, adding a few more highlights and shadows where I can. I think painting is an additive process, and as far as a solid foundation, I'm happy with how these ended. And as my timer ticks down to zero, I'm obviously nowhere close to being done. I guess if I really wanted to, I could play a game with these guys, but there's just so much unpainted black primer. It would really just hurt my soul to bring these to a game. So uh, I stop the timer and I reset it, now ascending. So let's see, uh, let's see how long it really takes me. I still have a day and a half before game time. All right, so talked to Brad, and he was obviously not even remotely close to finishing yet. So I thought I would spend a little bit more time building up some more highlights, cleaning up some details, and seeing what an extra hour and a half, two hours could do to bring these models to the next step. Fresh cup of coffee, fresh water in the wet palette, and uh, see where it goes. All right, 30 minutes past the 12 hour mark, and I'm applying some Nylac Oxide to all my metal bits, just like some greenish blue oxidization effects. Looks really intense now, but once I go back in and dry brush more metal over top of it, it'll look great. More of the same, straining my eyes on the tiniest details, just trying to clean them up as much as possible, as quickly as possible. All right, at this point, I thought that's good enough. Uh, my models kind of ended in a bit of an awkward stage, if I had planned to take 20, 24 hours, I would have spent more time in the building process making sure I scraped every mold line and had every joint cleaner. And so I feel like as far as these models, this is pretty much the end of the road for them unless I wanted to invest a lot more time and kind of strip back some layers. So pretty happy with how they turned out. And I decided as Brad kept working to spend some time making some terrain and getting ready for the next battle report. All right, so I now have 13 hours and 41 minutes spent on these 20 models. And here I am coming in with uh, another layer of dry brushing some metallics over top of the nylac on the metal pieces. And uh, it's really bringing the effect all together. Uh, the metal's looking A plus at this point. All right, a race to the finish here. I'm at 14 hours and 37 minutes, and you can see me working on the horns, just adding a layer of black and then dry brushing later on. I'm beginning to see how this took so long. I hate to say it, but at this point, I've kind of just given up on being fast. We like to lower the bar here as much as possible at Mountainside Tabletop. I still want to get these guys done for our game uh, on Sunday, which is fast approaching, but uh, what am I even working on here? What, what am I doing? Okay, so I'm four hours into overtime here, and I've just started uh, base coating the bases. Six hours into overtime here, oh my god, uh, I'm base coating like all the wound and sore and gut areas with some uh, Screamer Pink. I'm a shill. GW Paints. Don't at me. Alright, so 10 hours of overtime. This is the next day I had to come back after sleeping. I'm uh, washing the bases, just trying to get in the final details here. Uh, terrible. I, I absolutely failed this challenge, but I think I'll still be done in time to play with my friends on the weekend, so uh, my secondary goal, which is the most important goal, was still met, but I definitely failed the 12-hour challenge. I mean, you've already seen me lose the first two battle reports, you may as well also see me lose this painting challenge. And finally, 11 hours and 35 minutes of overtime later, 23 hours and 35 minutes spent, I am done. I stop the timer and go to sleep.
All right, some final thoughts here. I'm pretty happy with where I ended. If I had planned on doing this for more than 12 hours, then I probably would have spent a bit more time in the building phase to really clean things up. Add another layer of gravel to the bases, maybe put on another layer or two of base coat, but as far as the 12 hour challenge goes, I'm happy with how these ended up. I can very confidently say that they are tabletop ready and I'm looking forward to being the attacker in our next battle report and not having to roll off for that. I'm still relatively new to painting in this hobby, and uh, my first few sets of models that I painted just took me forever. So honestly, getting 20 guys done in 48 hours of real time is, for me, amazing. Additionally, I was trying out a lot of techniques that were new to me, and I'm really happy with how the whole horde effect came across. Going all in on the 50 shades of green here, I think really paid off. Overall, I'm super happy with how these turned out. So thanks for sticking around until the end of this video. If you haven't subscribed yet and you're into these, it helps us grow and that's cool for us and it's cool for you too, because if you like it, then more videos that you like is good for you, right? Keep an eye out for our next battle report where these two armies will be featured. Peace, y'all. See you in the next one. See you in the next one. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>